Hi, welcome to part eight of AWS certified SAP on AWS specialty. If you have not yet subscribed and become a member, do that. You can become a member, join, join and become a cloud kernel or a cloud ninja member for a very small premium. So let us look at this question. A bit long question. I find this certification a bit boring because of uh, the length of the questions and usually i see there are a lot of noise in the question the exact thing that will help you identify the answer is just one line but let us see here how the question has been laid down see the first thing that i see is this is a sap system and uh, where is it residing? It is residing in AWS within the VPC. So SAP is already on AWS. So it's like you have this yellow box as AWS and this blue box is SAP. So it is residing within AWS. Yellow box is AWS. And it is highly available. That means it is already on multiple AZ. You already know in AWS we have regions and availability zones so AZs are a part of a region like one region can have multiple AZs so green ones are regions and within each region there are AZs so you see here in the US East North Virginia it has six AZs and the so uh, the operating system is linux and they also have some sort of linux enterprise high easy extension high availability extension also configured so that means this is very critical application because when you configure Linux enterprise high availability extension, when you configure this, what happens is that you get maximum uptime. So you have to pay more for sure. And then it uses overlay IP address concept. So that the overlay means, uh, see, you have this, you see this line, you have a physical network interface. Overlay means you are trying to uh, create IPs. Uh, you are trying to create a network on top of this. That is a logical network. It is not physical, but logical. This guy, this guy is physical. And this guy here is logical. And SAP has some shared files. They have kept it in EFS, Plastic File System. So you need a solution that uses already. Okay, they are already making use of existing private connectivity to the VPC. Now, what solution we should use to meet these requirements? See, ALB not useful because we are talking about network and this guy is about application so this is wrong and this guy here is right because we got to use NLB because it is related to your networks load balancing the network and not the load on the application route 53 is to route end users to internet applications so we are not talking anything of that sort here see NAT gateway we use because people inside private subnet should talk outside your VPC here they are not specifically talking about such things 
they say they have private connectivity to the VPC but it's a private subnet or not not sure so it's not telling that you need to talk to people outside the VPC that's why I am striking this off then we have one answer that is your transit gateway so this one you can connect VPCs, accounts, on-premises, network, everything in a single go. And then it will make use of overlay IP address, the static route, and it will uh, use our transit gateway route table. This would be your answer. These two. So you have a company it's moving all their sap applications to aws this is your aws ec2 and obviously it has to be inside a vpc this dotted line this is a vpc it has to be inside a vpc and now there is a third party application some payroll application and this app, the blue box has to integrate with that. How using public web API? So the third party sits here, this purple guy, and this purple guy needs to talk to the blue box using APIs. And there are some corporate guidelines and that. They are saying that all outbound traffic must be validated. So they have a allow list that, you know, in Amani's party, there are so many guests. So there is a allow list that he created. Okay, I'll allow Shahrukh Khan, I'll allow Salman Khan, I'll allow, say, Jeff Bezos or whoever. He created an allow list. So that is how these guys are saying, I I only want outbound traffic to go to the allow list. So that means this purple guy will have to be in the allow list. Otherwise, this guy cannot, cannot talk. That is the thing. So the payroll, this purple guy, uh, it provides one fully qualified domain name, FQDN address. So what is FQDN? That is the question. It is fully qualified domain name. So it is a hierarchical name to a device like mobile phones or network routers. In the internet, it is a hierarchical name. So currently, all you also have firewall appliance and it is filtering FQDNs. So you have to tell the firewall uh, boss, please allow FQDNs. You will have to tell that. Okay. And what should we do now in this scenario? Like how we can make this purple guy talk to the blue guy. See, first we should go through all four options. Then we, you will see something which is not right. So here I see WAF, which seems off. See WAF you only use for SQL injection or XSS attack prevention. Question is not uh, telling you to prevent such attacks. So WAF straight away looks off. I will not even read other lines or other words of this option C because I would definitely not use WAF here. Second is I would not you know use a security group if I already have a firewall appliance so I would not use a security group to control things because I would 
do something on the firewall to control things so this is of similarly network acl network acl is a, a sister of security group it has a lot of similarity access control list so i would not use this also because i know that there is a firewall appliance i need to tell the firewall guys allow fqdns okay so d is my answer why because this guy is telling the firewall to do something to fix this and it is telling that create an outbound rule to allow the purple guy to connect to fqdn so this is my answer see here you have a company and same problem you got sap here and you want to move to aws this is AWS. you got to make this move so when you want to make this move this cannot be as simple as option d where you just do a data base migration it's not just the database you got to move the entire sap application so this server migration service should we move the entire server so this what it does is you can move your on premises workload to aws you can schedule incremental replications for the servers and so on see the question is here talking about migrating the database to sap han okay so dms will not work because for sap see it, if it was some just other application we could have used dms this is this is not some other application sap needs special treatment that's why you cannot just take the entire box entire server and move it or you cannot take the entire application migration service using ndr migration and move it you got to do something special this is not your general application so you have to follow option b so option b what it does is you got to use some database migration option with system move See, when we want to do some patch and upgrade work, we use some. Okay. Now you might say, buddy, we are not talking about any patch stuff here in the question. Why do we choose this? Hold on. What the option says is use the DMO option. So DMO is a component within some, it will help you migrate your SAP data. See any other data and SAP data both are different. So you need special treatment. B is that special treatment. I hope you understood the concepts that we explained and tried to decode. Become a member, Cloud Kernel and Cloud Ninja member, choose anyone and gain access to a lot more important questions we will post more questions for members for some time in the next two three days we will post more parts for members so stay tuned and focus on the concept sap portion is a bit difficult people from sap background might find it relatively easy but it is what it is this is the end of part 8.